Hi, I'm Jack Canfield, co-author of the best-selling book series, Chicken Soup for the Soul and the Success Principles. I'm here with John Bates. Really glad to have you here, John. Thank you Thank for joining you, me today. Great to be so, here. So tell me about, a little bit about who you are and what you do. Well, I have a company called Executive Speaking Success, and what, what I usually get brought in for first is that executives at places like NASA and Boston Scientific and Johnson & Johnson, companies like that, they're getting a lot more requests now to give talks that are TED-like on that TED format. Right. And I've got a lot of experience with the TED format, so I get brought in to train executives on how to be TED-worthy, is what I call it. And then once they figure out the principles that make that work, those principles go everywhere in their leadership, in their communication with their teams, in their, in their external communications, internal communications. So I get brought back because of that. So why are you so passionate about what you do? You know, I'll tell you a really quick story about that. Sure. I, was, uh, I always had the soft skills. And I was always really jealous of the people who had the hard skills because they got paid more, they seemed more valuable. So I was going around in my career trying to prove I'm valuable while I felt like I was, and it was just kind of awkward. <laughs> and then in 2009, I went to TED for the first time, and I saw really unequivocally the power of one person with a clearly articulated idea. And it really excited me. And I went to one of the very first ever TEDx events, which was in Santa Monica right afterwards. And there was this guy on stage who had a very interesting topic. He had all the hard skills in the world, but it was really an awkward talk. He was nervous. He was fidgeting. I mean, everybody in the audience, we were so nervous we were going to throw up because he was so nervous, you know. And, uh, and so, of course, the insecure evil part of me was going, ha, 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 right? But my friend Michael Weiss walked over and whispered in my ear, John, we've got to do something to help people like this. And it was one of the biggest light bulb moments of my life. Like the light bulb went on. And I realized that if I just got over myself, if I got that chip off my shoulder, I could make a difference for someone like that. So I went home and I started creating what's now my signature training, the Speak Like a Leader Boot Camp. And I based it all in science so that I could show someone with the hard skills not only what works with people, but why it works. And lucky for me, it turns out everybody wants to know why. So to get those great ideas communicated in a way that matches how great the idea is, is why I'm so passionate about this. So I'm curious, science, give me an example of science related to presentation. Okay, so they're, they're the, probably the, the fastest, easiest one is mirror neurons. Mm -hmm. We all have mirror neurons. And they're operating all the time. They're, they're neurons in our body that have us mirror what we see other people going through. If they take a conscious action, if they have an emotional experience. If I were you know, doing a cooking show and I had purple carrots and a big butcher knife and I was chopping up the carrots and I'm telling you about the benefits. Like, oh, right. Like, but I don't have carrots <laughs> and I don't have a butcher knife. But people jump when I do that. Mm -hmm. I jump when I watch videos of myself do that because we have mirror neurons. And when you as a speaker take on that they're mirroring you all the time, from the minute they see you because you're on stage and you're the speaker or you're the boss or you're speaking at this, at the, at this very moment, when you give them something good to mirror, you're going to get a much different result than when you don't. And to just not even be aware of mirror neurons in your presentation mm -hmm. is, is a big missing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, you may have already started to answer what my next question was going to be, is what makes your work different from other people who do similar work? Well, yeah, I, you are right. I think that that's one of the things that really differentiates me is that because of this love I have of TED and, and the, the difference I wanted to make for scientists and engineers and doctors and people like that, I based everything in human evolutionary biology and human neurophysiology. And it turns out, lucky for me, ages and ages ago, I went to UCLA and I actually uh, got a degree in sociology with an emphasis in social psychology, which I thought, you know, I'm, not, I'm never going to use that. No, actually, I use it all the time now <laughs> because that basis in science, that focus on... And the great thing, too, Jack, is that... Just This was all lucky accident, but by focusing it on, on science like that, mm -hmm. I can give people principles now 
that make a difference in any style they have. Like if your style is, is bubbly and vivacious, great, the principles will work. If your style is a little more stead and solid, great, the principles will work. And once people get the principles, they're far more creative about their communication and how they approach communication in general because they understand the principles. It's not some checklist, I've got to do this. Right. So it's, it's really exciting. That is exciting. So what are some of the challenges that you're working with all these people? What are the challenges that they face that you can help them overcome? You know, one big challenge, and maybe it, it sticks out from what I've already said, is that uh, the big challenge is people think logic should be enough. Mm -hmm. Logic should win. I mean, I've got the best business plan. I should win the business co pitch competition. I've got the best idea for what the company should do next. The employees should follow me. But logic is not enough. It's necessary in the marketplace. Like there's lots and lots of people with great ideas. That's necessary you, just to get in the door. But it's not sufficient. Just having logic by itself will never convince people. We don't take action from the logical part of our brain. We take action from the emotional, ancient part of our brain. And if, if you want someone to do something or you want to influence someone and you don't give them that emotional connection along with your logic, then your logic can't do its job. So you know, to, to, uh, to get people to understand that there is that other component besides their great idea, they have to communicate it and connect with people. And then one other big challenge that I see is people who are already really famous speakers when they go into a TED format setting. And because they're already great speakers, they think, oh, yeah, I'm going to dial this. I'm just going to do it. And, oh, yeah. and they go kind of do their same old shtick, and it really falls flat. Whereas the people I work with who maybe they're a little not quite sure if they're the great speaker, boy, they come with beginner's mind. They're coachable. They take the coaching. They think about it. They work on it. And then they go out and crush that talk mm -hmm. where the people who were already great speakers, they just kind of go do huh, the same old thing. And it's, it, it really, you can just tell they didn't do it the same way. Right. So I'm sitting here going, hmm, I'm, I'm interested in it. And I'm, I'm, I've been doing this for years. <laughs> yeah. And I told you before we came on camera that I have resisted doing a TED Talk because I can't think of how I can condense what I do yeah, down into yeah. the 18 or 20 minute format. So I'm sitting here thinking, eh, maybe I should work with John. So if there's people out there watching this and they're thinking of working with you, doing this work, what would you say to them? You know, I would say to them, uh, I would say, if you're thinking about working with me, I know a couple things about you. First of all, you're committed to something. You wouldn't even be considering this if you weren't. And you're probably already taking a lot of risk and putting a lot of time and energy into whatever that is. And now that I've been doing this for a long time, I can tell you from experience that if you're thinking about working with me, that thing you think you'll get, that thing you want, that difference, it, you'll get that and far, far more. You can probably not even imagine the difference that it will make if you take some time and focus on being even better at communicating your great ideas. And my why is to bring out what's awesome inside every person so it can live in the world and make a real difference. And I'd love to work with you. Wow, I'm inspired. Right on. <laughs> That's great, John. Thank you so much. You're super welcome, Jack. Thank All you, right, too. I appreciate this. It was fun. Yeah, take care.